Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Rural Report, a monthly program from the Center for Rural Affairs that celebrates the work being done to create vibrant communities in rural America. I'm your host, Teresa Hoffman. Rural hospitals provide vital health care services to their communities, but many have been forced to close in recent years because of financial challenges. Today, my guest and I are discussing a new tool that could help keep the doors open at rural hospitals on the brink of closing. According to a Center for Rural Affairs white paper released last year, the more than 670,000 people who live in rural Nebraska rely on just 214 rural health care facilities. Most are designated as rural health clinics, which employ primary care providers such as physicians, nurse practitioners, and support staff. While those clinics work to provide outpatient primary care and basic laboratory services, they do not encompass all the needs of rural residents, particularly in emergency situations. But a new healthcare provider type may be able to help. The Rural Emergency Hospital designation, or REH, was created by Congress in late 2020 and went into effect in January 2023. REH is the first new rural provider type created in more than 20 years. As of last year, Nebraska was one of just 13 states with laws in place to enable REH operations. In February of this year, the Friend Community Health Care System in Saline County became the state's first provider to apply the designation. Amy Tim is the healthcare system's chief clinical and operations officer. She's here to share how the designation was earned and what it means for their services. Well, before we get started talking about the REH designation, uh, tell me a little bit about Friend Community Healthcare Systems. Here at Friend Community Healthcare System, um, we are still offering quite a few services um, and added more services. Um, we offer outpatient services, which is different than observation services. So um, both of those are still alive and well here today. Um, the outpatient services are specialty clinics or IV care, wound care, um, observation status for those who still need a little bit of time to get well, um, tw usually 24 to 48 hours. Um, and then we have a full rural health clinic attached so, uh, which we've just off, um, opened more evening hours to um, create better access. And um, we also started endoscopy services back in March. And those are just, um, uh, those have continued to, to go well. We're trying to build volumes right now. Well, rural hospitals and healthcare facilities have and continue to face challenges. What was your operation like and what challenges did the system face before the transition? As a critical access hospital, we faced um, we faced a volume um, problem. We just didn't have, we are, our location is such that we are 30 minutes away from uh, at least three other hospitals. There are other clinics in town, at least two or three of them, two for sure. Um, so our volumes, um, you know, we compete for volumes, um, we compete for staffing, and um, so those those were the main two things that we just um, had um, were struggling with. And so and and a lot also then brings about payroll. We we struggled to meet payroll. So what ultimately led to this the decision to transfer to an REH and what does that mean for the for the system? Well, um, we had one of our board members had um, heard about the REH designation and we've been talking about it in our in board meetings for several months. Um, we we all gathered the literature that we could um, and we all agreed it made sense, but we still didn't know, um, you know, how we would go about it. And then, um, and then as the months went by, this that was in February, and as the month went months went by in July, we were very, finding it very hard to meet payroll. It was just, it was a decision that pretty much made itself. We had to do something different, and so we went ahead with. Um, educating the community, having a community town hall, and then um, finding the people to help us get through the application process. 
So because the REH designation is so new, many Nebraskans have questions um, about the detailed federal requirements. In particular, uh, the stipulation against inpatient care has raised concerns about whether the designation might actually reduce access to needed health care or require local residents to travel distances. Is that a concern for friend community health care system? And if so, how have you addressed that? It was initially a concern, and then we decided that um, because we do have area facilities, we could still serve our population by um, bettering our relationships with them or um, bolstering our relationship with them. And, and with that, it means that an REH um, can transfer to a critical access hospital. Hospital, They are a, a higher level of care. So with that, we went ahead, um, we had communications and conversations um, specifically with Geneva, and we've been able to um, secure a spot there if we need inpatient care and that's just 20 minutes down the road and now they can take only what uh you know a critical access hospital can take but for many of our population you know um, a pneumonia that lingers uh, or a broken hip they can take care of that and, and we can still keep them close to home so that was one answer and we're developing those relationships every um you know as we move along with other facilities We've also heard concerns that the REH designation may raise the cost of emergency medical services or increase the burden on EMS volunteers. Um, many, you know, many in the state, uh, those positions are volunteers. So how does your healthcare system support that essential feature of emergency care? We are extremely lucky to have a very robust staff of EMS providers, and um, they they help us. Um, they're available. They will um, even stay longer at the hospital and, and help us um, with the patients if we need. But we also have a system called um, Avell eCare. So it's an uh, emergency telemedicine service. And so together with the, um, the active um, EMS that we have and Avell eCare, they both, Avell will start calling other other services if we can't get through to our own or, or if they're available. Um, it frees up our staff, frees up our nurses. Um, so right now, I mean, we we understand that there is a shortage and um, you know that is something we've spoken about with all our other neighboring and critical access hospitals. Um, honestly, we haven't had to wait too long, so it hasn't been a real big issue. I should knock on wood. <laughs> So your CEO and CFO, Jared Chaffin, called this transition um, a game changer. How so? Well, I think mainly because we got to the point where we were just days away. We couldn't make payroll. And with the infusion that this program gives us every month, an infusion of $3.2 million every year, which is roughly two seventy-seven dollars a month, really helped us get back on our feet with um, with paying our bills with paying our, our um, you know, people. And so we were able to gain a little bit more, more momentum and then add some services that we needed to. So um, it, it really was a game changer for us. So you really were like on the brink of closing? Days away. Days, wow, that's amazing. Yeah, so. So what's the best thing? I, I know this is you you are you are kind of in the early stages of this, but what's the best thing you've personally seen come out of this designation there at Friend uh, so far? I think what we like, um, obviously we're it, it's new and we're learning every day, but how we feel in the area we're at is is just the ability to continue services for the patient and not just act as an urgent care. We still mm -hmm. can offer, you know, um, infusions, wound care, some transportation, some uh, meals on wheels, things like this that is very vital to this community. And so, you know, I, I think we need to market that. And um, instead of focus on the things that we can't provide, we need to focus on the things we can. And that list keeps getting longer every day. So... We're happy for that. 
And it sounds like you've developed some good partnerships with other places that may be able to provide services you can't. Yes, right. Okay. That's the name of the game is to mm -hmm. together. So there's, you know, lots of these hospitals, rural hospitals out there that are, they're facing the challenges that you, uh, your system faces, faced uh, before you started looking in on this designation. So what advice can you offer those systems um, that are considering making the transition? Well, um, one thing we did initially that really helped was reach out to others and they were so um, awesome to give us information. So I would start with that as if I'm happy to help um, anyone who, who's thinking about it. I know Jared would be as well. Um, we can walk you through it. It's, it's a different need. It's a different definition for everyone. Um, and, you know, I'd help them to navigate through the application process. You have to write an action plan. There's certain things. Um, and obviously, we we have worked through our NHA, the Nebraska Rural Health Association, you know, our uh, Rural Health Redesign Center, all of these people. We've, we've got quite a network of people we can lean on. And um, I would definitely just be happy to give the, these resources to anyone. And, and to help them out and you know it's you, you're never alone so um so and it sounds like it didn't take a long time sometimes you know these types of things could take years years um it didn't sound from what you had said that it took a long time no you're correct and you know i'm i look back at it we started our um, application process october 1st which in retro, you know, I thought, oh boy, here we go. You know, the holidays are coming upon us and it'll be all, you know, delayed. And um, actually there were a few delays, but not many. And in, in all fairness, it's it was new to everybody. It was new to CMS, it was new to our state. Um, and so, but everybody got on board. Everybody was intrigued. Everybody wanted to learn and it, it really helped our process. So from, you know, October to uh, February is, was, our process of time length, timeline, and it really wasn't that bad. And as Jared will tell you, we were able to pocket some cash. I would tell them, you know, you got to kind of set some away because you never know how long it would take. But mm -hmm. um, we we got got through it pretty pretty quickly. I would say that's great. So if you'd like to learn more about Friend Community Healthcare System, I've included a link to their website below. I've also included a link to the center's 2023 white paper outlining the designation and the potential impact of rural emergency hospital facilities on maintaining healthcare access in Nebraska. Amy, thank you again for joining me on this month's rural report. And thanks all of you for tuning in. If you'd like to learn more about the Center for Rural Affairs, visit our website at CFRA.org.